there's VA phone callers, and then there's business development reps. And sometimes there's a little confusion as to what the real difference is, or can one do the other? That's what we're going to talk about today, right here, right now on the Mortgage Loan Officer Podcast, brought to you by the Mortgage Marketing Animals. I'm your host, Frank Array. I'm here with my partner and my BDR, Bill Crossan, on the show today. Hi, Bill. How's it going, my friend? Going on, buddy. Here we go. We're just going to rock and roll this thing. You know, Bill, I wanted to get you on here because I just, you and I have recently gone through, how should I say this, an an experience where um, you were expanding your your reach as far as being able to help originators with business development uh, Mm -hmm. beyond the help that you give me, right? So uh, we reached out to a bunch of originators in a very powerful coaching program called the Freedom Club, which I'm a part of, and uh, many other people are. It's part of Mortgage Marketing Animals. And long and short of it, I'll tell the story, Bill, and then and then sure. we'll, we'll 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 do this. So essentially, yeah. I Frank Ray am, am you know have not originated on a street level for you know fifth, over fifteen years, and then recently decided to dip my toe back in the water because I want to build something of equity for my kids that I can hand off to them basically. So decided why not let's get back into the game. So I think it was April, May 1st was the April 1st or May 1st that, you know, I officially was the the face of our partnership bill, Frank Array loan officer and uh, started moving forward. And so I'm ramping up, right. Getting some deals in the door and bill my partner in, in Titan lending partners. And, uh, and the the mortgage uh, uh, endeavor that I've started uh, was just so gracious to come on and be a biz dev guy for me, making no money. <laughs> you know what I that mean? Just betting on the come, and uh, we took it pretty far. And and then, but it came to the point where it's like, hey, man, I could I could really use something, you know. So I was like, man, let me do what Carl White always says to do, and that is to share. Like maybe I can mm-hmm. find someone else that can help. Uh, cover you uh, uh, so that I don't lose you and I still get your services and then somebody else can enjoy your services as well. And so we reached out to, you know, the Freedom Club people. We got a handful of inquiries. Uh, we basically, you know, um, you know, found a couple of people that that you started to do some work for. Um, and one of them happens to be like probably will be the number one mortgage broker in the country here very soon. She's already yep. number two. I'm pretty sure of that. But she and she's determined to be number one. She will be it. That's just who she is. <laughs> but so she definitely took interest and wanted to hire you on, which she did. And we had another individual who wanted to hire you on. And I think we we learned something through this that I think is important for everyone who's listening to understand. And that is this. And because and I want you to explain the differences here, Bill, but but the real short here, so I can just kind of get you going is is one of those the 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 high very high producing originator totally got it and understands where bill's skill set came into play as a business development rep where the other one um t- terrific individual amazing originator doing quite well uh however really kind of wanted to point bill in a different direction which was more of a virtual assistant phone caller kind of a role and long and short of it that relationship we kind of you know, amicably decided, okay, this is this is probably not the right fit for this. And the other one actually increased the amount of of um, um, uh, bandwidth that she wants from from you. There's a big difference between a VA caller setting up appointments and a business development rep. And I just want to lay that out for everybody. What is the real? And now I'm not going to say, one one only does this one only does that you could probably find somebody who can do both you probably could find that but sure. for the most part i don't think so i think if you've got somebody who's focusing on just getting appointment set of real estate agents for you to engage with as an originator that's one skill set but business development's altogether another another skill set what what are your thoughts on this bill yeah well first of all i think it has to do with their level of 
personal involvement in the conversation, right? And in the role that you're taking. So, you know, I've been called a VA. You could call me that if you want, because I'm not there, but the role is different. A VA really super important, you know, I need one for myself, you know, but it's, it's more of the front end of a phone call to get an activity done. It's not, it's not an opportunity to dig deeper and really get to the point of developing the business. It's just simply an opportunity to chat. So I get that, you know, so anyone can, you know, pick up the phone and call a hundred times and get somebody to meet for an appointment. It's just a matter of numbers and that's okay. And that's necessary, but it depends on if you're going to hire a BDR, shouldn't have him there. That's not the lane. We need to get him up into the place where he can take some things off the plate of the originator, right? But to do that, there's many blessings along the way in this. Like I was in title forever. I've been in this for 23 years. If it wasn't for title companies letting me talk to thousands of realtors, lenders, you know, buyers, sellers, I wouldn't have the the amount of conversations to tap into when I really care about furthering the conversation. In a, in a VA set situation, Frank, I'm just like everybody else. I'm just, you know, hello, this is me. I'd like to meet you at this time, here we go. That's not fulfilling to me, you know, but I would do it if I had to, but I've always insisted on going deeper, maybe even almost to a fault. And, um, but I like that. I think in this post pandemic era too, the glasses that we see through need to change, man. People are looking for something stable to really grasp onto anything. And even in a business development conversation, you've got to relate really quick. Yeah. And that means anything they say, I have to really be familiar with. And I think that matters because, you know, I don't want to get called by anybody. I really, really don't. I don't want anyone knocking at my door. But you know what? When I'm a BDR and I care about really them understanding the people I represent and the language we speak, not some industry language, but real talk, that's what gets me going, man. It gets me jacked up. And to get that opportunity to represent somebody at the top level and get into what people really need and care about, but let's be honest, a VA is not going to be able to do that not because of a language barrier. You know what it is? They didn't work for a title company for, you know, 15 right. plus years. It's, and have it's an all those experience barrier is what it is. It's an experience barrier. Right. But you know, that doesn't mean they're, they're any less important because it has to get us to the next step. But I think where it ultimately comes down to is that, and I know in Carl's situation, we're trying to, especially with the Freedom Club members, freeing up some of their time, especially on that Friday, taking things off their plate. You know, and a BDR person should be able to represent that originator, um, but not just in product knowledge, right? And, and certainly not in the, the type of product they should have, but in telling that originator story. It's mm. the story. The BDR tells a story, the VA sets appointments. Got it. Yeah. It's, it's, here's my experience, just so you guys know with, with Bill. And this is why I was so desperate not to lose him when, and, and I reached out and said, Hey, can somebody share Bill with me because I don't want to lose him. Um, is when like for a, a I think a, a good BDR, I'm not going to say has to have experience in the industry. I'm not going to say they have to, uh, but I'd say if they do, if they do have industry experience in communicating with real estate people and buyers, um, it's a big advantage. It's it's just a big advantage because a, a BDR that has experience in the arena has the cap capacity to have conversations with referral partners and buyers, right? Past clients uh, that all makes sense to them, right? He's able to speak the language. Right. I mean, That's what Bill, I'm talking about. Bill totally understands what it means to, you know, you know, hey, I know we got to meet the appraisal contingency and the loan contingency and the close of escrow. Day. Like he gets all that. He and and I think what 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 really helps on the BDR side as well is. And uh, granted, I'm lucky with Bill. Um, 
because Bill just has a natural ability to somehow be able to just get on the phone with somebody and have a great conversation. Like once Bill gets past the, who is this? And he has a way of doing it. He has a way of just saying, hey, what's going on? How you doing? What's that? You know, and how important is that aspect of, of BDR, Bill, being able to just have that, you know, I don't, I don't know if intelligent conversation is the right way to say it, but that like-minded conversation, being able to break down that initial phone call barrier. How important is that for you, for you? It's everything and it's, it's comfort and it's compassion. You know, I think that's really where it comes from too. And to say, I have that knack, you know, of, of getting in there and getting to that point I need to get with the conversation. I remember so many times in the past, I've heard someone say, man, you've got a you know, gift for gab or you can really talk the talk. It's not that. You know why it goes over well? Because it's the truth. I care about it. I like people. You know, I've heard it. And so my my just, you know, gift, and that's why I think anybody could do this. Here's who I would hire as a BDR. I need somebody that loves people. Mm -hmm. They gotta, they gotta love talking to people. You know, the people that don't want to go to the store. They want the groceries brought to the car. Yeah. That might be the VA. Yeah. Right. But I want to go in the store and I promise you I'm making friends. Mm. I can't help it. So it's a natural concern for others. Learning your job as a professional. And then I don't know what it is other than like thinking about being not letting your partners down, you know, wanting to learn who the person is I'm working for really is. Like I've told you, so many people are afraid to have interactions with, with people they don't do business with or know, you know, they walk into an office and they're so scared. But when I walk in the office and I've got Frank Gray. I told you what that was like. I'll leave part of it out, but it's like a golden nugget in the left pocket. Like you, my shoulders get a little more wide and I stand taller and I believe in what I'm doing. And this is not rocket science and people just need to be cared for. You can't, I can't tell you how many past clients I've talked to that just, they're shocked. I just wanted to say thank you because you matter. You know, you do matter. Now, here's where the, the industry knowledge doesn't have to be there. But what I would take over knowledge anytime is somebody that just cares about that other person on the other line, that client, the past client, the agent, the lender, anyone, that you have some sense of compassion for where they're coming from. Hmm. You're not laying stuff out. You're not throwing demands on somebody. You know, listen care but you know what when i got who i represent now and you know who i do i mean i'm untouchable i'm untouchable and because and just i've to done be, my homework I've done yeah, my homework on her yeah so just to be clear yeah so i get what you're saying you're saying look this person this per well in my case frank array the the national real estate post guy the mm -hmm. dude who's got you know, been on Fox News multiple times, yep. you know, mm -hmm. Inman 100, you know, so you've got this, you can go into an agent or a, or a, or, or a customer and say, Hey, this is who we're, who I'm repping over this. Do you know this guy? Right. Like, so, and then likewise with the, the, the originator you're repping, you're repping also um, her story and who she is and her, the caliber of originator that she is, it's like a big fat badge of honor you can wear on your chest. It's a beautiful thing. When yeah. you start engaging with real estate people or with, with clients. So, Bill, where does the BDR get pointed? Who who does the BDR, ideally in this mortgage situation, I, I want to get a BDR. Where do I sick them or her? Where do I where do I let them cut loose on? Oh man. First of all, find that past client database. Tell me Absolutely. about that. Tell, tell me the about past that. client database because how have those calls is, gone for you that you're making just, calls been, tell me about some of them give me some examples been, of how it's been yeah. insane i mean i've i've called i've made some friends 
I've sang a song on one of my past client calls <laughs> two weeks ago. So you sang a song with a past yes. client of this originator. You guys got to be in one phone call, got yes. to be good enough pals to where you're singing songs together on the phone. Seriously. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man. I'll sing one for you right now if I have to, but we'll <laughs> no, skip on that. Spare us. Okay. That. Okay. Fine. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's past clients. And here's why it is widely known by everybody watching this, that their weakest link as a business person is their past client database management. Mm. End of story. Yeah. True. Cross the board. You can admit it or you can't, but it's okay because you're so successful and busy like many companies, not just our industry, that doesn't have time to even focus on that. So then you know it's important. You don't have the time to do it. So you do your monthly automated things. And that's not what you told those clients when they closed. Yeah. You know what you told them? You said probably, you know. I'm, I'm going to stay in touch or something. I just want you to know that, you know, you started out as my client. And and, and these moments where I give you the keys, I realized that we're not, you're not my client. You're my friend. Well, thanks for the happy birthday with an automated email. You know, mm. that's not call and care. Call mm. and care. Mm. But again, we can preach it all day long. They won't have the time, nor should they have the time to do those calls. The BDR right. should be making them. The BDR should. And do you get, do you get, so you've been making calls now for some time, for some time mm -hmm. uh, to the past client database of, of your, of your uh, originator that you're working with. And um, uh, is there any pushback to that? Do they, do they, because I know a lot of people fear, they go, well, why isn't, why isn't Frank calling me? And why are you, could you ever get anything like that from them? Or how is the call received when you say I'm Bill and I'm with so-and-so? And I'm probably, you know, beyond a thousand, you know, calls yeah. already, but I have never heard that. And I'll tell you why, because I call with a purpose, you know, it wasn't meant to be Frank and it wasn't meant to be Tammy. It was meant to be a message about, what Tammy wants to convey or mm -hmm. Johnny wants to convey or mm -hmm. Frank wants to convey. It doesn't matter who you represent. Mm -hmm. It could be anybody, but it's a message on behalf of them. So watch this. The And what has happened is I've gotten shot. I can like test it out. If I say, hello, John. Am I John's John? going to be, John's yeah. going to be skeptical about who is this? I've noticed that this? a lot. Yeah. You can't wait, like, wait what, a what second. Call me for? Who is this? Yeah. Yeah. So no, I'm like, uh, you know, it's, it's, I'm calling because I know it's John. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. You know? So I'm like, John, what are you doing, buddy? Hey, how you, how's it going? This is Bill Crossan, you know, work with Frank Ray, blah, 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 whatever it is. Um, and my sole purpose for calling you is A, B, and C. Now every mm -hmm. originator may have a different purpose mm -hmm. and we change ours often. Mm -hmm. and I'm willing to share that message, but what a blessing it is for me to call somebody that is excited because I've prefaced it with my sole purpose of the call is this. I make mm. it very clear. There's no selling. There's no backdoor manipulation of the purpose of the call. It is sincere. And I want them to know what I know about the person I represent. Mm. You understand that? Mm -hmm. So it be it you or any of the other originators it doesn't matter i need to know about them i wouldn't work for them if i didn't believe in them and if they didn't believe in me i couldn't also do that and unleash what i feel mm. so now it's just all real stuff I'm talking to real people right that are past clients that forgot where they even send their mortgage check to yeah right you understand yeah. so then it comes back to Tell Tammy, tell Frank, tell Eddie, who really appreciated this call. And how is Frank? Mm. That, so How's that happens. That's how. All that's the time. how. I get, all the time. I, oh, you, dude! All you the blew time. me away. You blew me the, away the other day. You called me and you said, <laughs> "Hey, man, uh, one of the one of the past clients that I had a great conversation with, you know, a few weeks ago, called me. Oh, yeah. Called me and said, "Hey, Bill. Uh, yeah." Uh, well, I'll just say the, the, the gal you're, you're helping is Tam, her name's Tammy. And, uh, you, you the, the guy called you and said, Hey, 
I want to buy a place somewhere in Florida and I want Tammy to, to help me out. Called you. Yeah. To to let that her awesome. know. Yeah, to let her know he wants to do another another deal. And that's I think that crystallizes, you know, what I think any originator's BDR, you know, relationship fantasy would be <laughs> to where it's like, it's like that. But I guess the point that I that I want to make with this podcast is is that this is the difference between BDR and appointment setting VA phone caller, right? So you don't want to bring on a BDR, in my opinion, I, you know, everybody has their way, right? And, I, and I've learned this from Carl, never to say one thing or the other, like Carl's always very gracious to say, hey, not all the time or not everybody. And I'll say that here, right? You know, but I would say you, you bring on a BDR to have these types of conversations, these these slowed down, not rushing the call, checking in, how's it going? We just wanted to follow up and say, thanks for doing business. You know, what, you know, how are you doing? Is there anything I can, you know, these slowed down, engaging phone calls that end with, thanks so much. Tell so-and-so thank you for the call. And, you know, that's what the BDR does. And this applies to real estate agents too, correct? I mean, you do this with realtors as well. So Absolutely. that's what you that's that, a, just full disclosure. That's what Bill primarily did for me was my realtor. We'd get the appointment. Honestly, Bill's daughter was our quote unquote VA phone caller. She was the one setting the appointments. And then I would do the appointments, but then Bill would be my follow-up guy. I would follow up, but so would Bill and Bill and still is, he still is, would be, still is, does my, a lot of my follow-up uh, just to reach out and touch base and see what's going again, though. That's where I feel you point the BDR to develop the existing relationships that I already have with my referral partners and to further develop the relationships I have with my past clients. I mean, that's just kind of what I think the difference is. I mean, do you agree and, with me, Bill? And Absolutely. And really successful people. And I told you, like Freedom Club members speak a different language. Successful realtors speak a different language. It depends on what level you consider success. I'm not judging the numbers, but the fact is, it took you giving me the green light to not be a sales rep that gives away papers and pens and donuts. And yeah, you gave me the green light to pump the brakes, get in there and do whatever it is you're doing because your connectivity is, is there. And so that's what I like to think. I am not, and I get offended if I call somebody and I have to be treated as if I'm a person that doesn't care about that realtor, because I do care when I call. I'm not wasting my time. I know who you are. I did my homework, but I get offended when they don't have time to let me say hello. That's not going to, you know, and I've learned that why would I be reaching out to people and why would I advise the people I represent as originators to go after people they don't know when these successful originators have a ton of people they already know. Mm -hmm. They just have not accepted the fact they're not going to get on that past client database. It's time to hire somebody to do that. It's mm -hmm. so valuable. It's, it's incredible. And so remember, every call I make to a realtor on your behalf always was never about selling them on you. They have to sell themselves on me to get to you. Hmm. That might sound bold and cocky, but it's not when you do your homework and you understand that we're professionals, we don't have to be callers. And I respect the VA. Like, I'll do it right now. But just understand what your purpose is and what your what your value is and how much you maybe should be expending as an originator on a VA, mm. you know, and it depends on you. Do you want volume? Do you not care what the other person says? Do you, what do you, what are we doing here? And if you care, BDR, but you can't get an experienced BDR person that doesn't care. Do I make the point? Yeah. VAs, God bless them. I'm not allowed to care if I'm a VA calling. I can't care in 10 seconds. Yeah, and I want to emphasize the point here. VAs are awesome and we need them. And awesome. We use them and, and we you have to have them. And a lot of times it might be called a freedom caller where yeah. 
Yes. They're 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 calling real estate agents and setting appointments, and they're awesome at it, and they do a great job. We've got VAs yeah. like Richard Smith's company. Um, yeah, uh, his company he hires VAs that just slay it. Like they'll make a gazillion calls and they'll set up a bunch of appointments, and they're great at it. That's one aspect of it. I what we're saying here is again is start with that for sure, you know, so you can get yeah. things rolling, right? But if you're an experienced LO and you've got a past client database that you have not you know, really sat down and made sure you're calling literally every day. You know what I mean? Because especially if you got a big past client data, there's some originators out there literally got thousands Bill. The one you're working with has several yeah. thousand, you know, have thousands. You could literally be calling every single day into that past past client database. Um, but if, if you're an originator in that capacity, um, you really should be looking at a biz development rep who can engage with those past clients in a meaningful, yes. you know, purposeful way asking for the business and, drawing business out you've brought out plenty of referrals i know you've you've captured plenty of referrals oh, already yeah. and they and, happen almost every day yeah and then and then also that you know you can point like i use bill is to hey man bill like i can't get to my farm agents i have farm agents i do big ag land and farmland or i'm trying to do that and bill i can't get those calls so they can you engage with them for me today and he does you know he's like, how's it going you know but frank just want me to reach out what's happening over there bill and, and a lot of this is his experience he knows the language that real estate agents speak. He knows their business. He knows where their heads are. So he can really talk to him and just, you know, get the commitment for the next deal really easily because he's got that savvy, that experience. And so again, and full VA, disclosure, man, about yeah. VA. So let's talk about this because this is really important. Sometimes your best you, you need to find out what you're not really strong at. And like you used to tell me, ride the horse the direction it's going. Yeah. Let me tell you what I can't do. Um, because VAs are so important. I don't think I'm a very good VA in that role. And you you know why? You remember why you told me? Because mm -hmm. I can't get off the phone. You talk too much. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah you, you do. Do you understand the discipline it takes? It's not funny. I've called 300 people in a day, 10 days in a row, recently in the last year. So it is not easy. It's super valuable. It still is. We still do dabble in that when we need to it's critical we're just talking about another level of understanding don't recruit a bdr and it's kind of like recruiting a mechanic and having them you know go paint the house or something it's like yeah yeah we're two different purposes and there's two skill sets there really are there really are they, they are that's the purpose the of this yeah, that's the purpose of this podcast. I'm even titling it, you know, uh, uh, VA caller versus BDR, you know, and 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 then and it's it's not versus like competitive. It's no, it's the the contrast between the two. It's one is for one thing, one is for another thing. And again, I'm not going to say one can't can't do both. I'm not going to say that. There, there's, surely, there's people I can do both. But I'm I'm saying in most cases, in most cases, or many cases, it's going to be. You know, getting the appointment set to meet with new to you realtors is an excellent position for your VA caller, especially a good one that can crank those suckers out and they're invaluable to you. But if you've got, you know, a nice pool of real estate agents that you want to stay engaged with in a, in a, in a, in a, in a very professional way uh, and past clients that you have not been, that you've been neglecting to make the phone calls to BDRs is definitely your, your way to go, but you got to find the right person. I mean, you, you really do got to find it. Oh, and here's the other thing I'd say that to this as well is, how do I say this? There is a little bit of the, you get what you pay for in this, right? There's a little bit of that. So, um, and I'm not going to say you can't get an excellent BDR to call your past clients and and stay in touch with your realtor relationships a, on a budget. I'm not going to say you can't do that. You probably can. But I but I will tell you, if you find the right person, you may have to spend a, you know, a nice, you know, a, a decent little bit of money on on that person. But that person will make you 10 times that. I mean, you just, you know, and and it'll be an, an incredible experience. Let's let's try and wrap this up, Bill. Um, and so we're not here pitching anything. Bill, it can't well, work for you. He, I he's was gonna busy. Say the hybrid, the hybrid perfect thing, Frank, is right now in our and you know, why not me be the BDR? You know, why not also have a VA, right? Oh, for sure. You can have both. 100%. You get the yeah. VA feeding me before it gets to the next person. Mm. That's even mm. more. Could efficient. do that. Yeah, I could do that. Yeah. But, All um, kinds of things. Yeah, I, I would say um, 
you know, yeah, Bill, so yeah, you can't hire Bill or anything. Oh yeah, he's busy. He's working with somebody. But I'm just saying, if you as an originator at that place where you're thinking BDR, where should I point them? I'm saying point them at the existing realtor relationships you've got, maybe some that you haven't been so good about staying in touch with. He's per, you know, he's perfect. A BDR would be perfect for that. And then also 100% that past client database. If you get a yes. really good BDR, that's a gold mine for you. It's an absolute gold mine. And that's where I would point a BDR, man. And, um, yeah. you know, you got to find like the right Jim person. A little secret, too, is that for years, the last 10 years, probably, I've been just dying to get to this point. And nobody in our industry is willing to open that avenue up to really being real and talking to the people like they're human beings. I understand tech is busy and we just got to, we go, 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 go. But I'm telling you, I always said, if you just call a hundred clients and ask them what they think, what do they want? What matters to them? Stop talking to each other so much as talk to the clients. So and I will tell you, the realtors, too, is another great angle to go. But the past clients, you've earned that. They deserve that. That's the right thing to do. Mm. It mm. is, man. It's the right thing to do. They've already paid you. You guys mm. are friends. I get it. It's been a long time. You forgot to call. They don't mind. They don't. They're even yeah. more happy. I had somebody say, wow, now that I think about it, it's been two and a half years since I bought that house, you know, and come to think of it boom 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 next thing you know i get a you know a little message that that person since realizing it had been that long is now looking to do something else there you go that's why we so, do it maybe yeah. do another buy but you know what i sleep good and i'm so blessed and grateful to have that opportunity to share with these people they're really good people you know they're just we have to remember they don't know what we know they just don't so I have compassion for that. Mm. Understand that. Understand why they're scared. Understand why they don't want to answer the phone. Understand why they don't want you to call at the same time every single week. Care, you know? So it's authenticity. But Frank, I hope I was able to share a little bit of the difference. Yeah, you, 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 know? you were. I just, I just, I've been so excited to see. Uh, we've known each other for, God, Bill, 20 years something like that yeah. i don't even know and uh we've known each other as you know friends but we haven't worked together or anything like that and it's only been the past year or so that we've started working together directly and and it was very quickly that i i realized your ability and and like the value that you bring to the table and so it's been just super cool to uh be a part of the your journey you know to connect you to some some people and and watch it yeah. flourish in uh, in this in this thing that you were meant like almost meant to do you know but um so it's been really cool to do that but and i guess that a good way to end this thing i think would be is if you are if you're maybe you're uh um an originator who has a bdr maybe someone that's new for you maybe they could get something from the podcast listening to bill you know maybe they'll pick something up from bill if you share this podcast with them, or if you're thinking on hiring a, a BDR, maybe just, you know, really give that some strong consideration to who you're going to hire based on what you heard today, you know, based on what you heard today. And uh, that's about it. I think that's about all we can do. Um, right. We're just sharing. And yeah. And, nope. but I just really wanted to make sure that everybody understands, you know, sometimes, sometimes some people feel like, you know, a VA does it all and, it, and, a, and a VA, you know, and not that they can't again, I can say this over and over again, but, but understand there's a difference between someone making a call to set an appointment and someone who's reaching into your valued past client database, representing you, right. And, and, and making that phone call a great experience and getting some business in the door. So Listen, we got to get out of here. I can hear my dog yes, barking. Sir. There's some flowers coming from my wife's birthday and I better get them. So we're going to sign off. Guys, join us every day. Loan Officer Breakfast Club. LoanOfficerBreakfastClub.com, Monday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Uh, to 9 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, we'll be back here again next week on the Mortgage Loan Officer Podcast. Bill, thanks so much for being here. And I hope you guys got something good out of this. We'll catch you all got later. Got it, brother. Thanks, man. See you guys. Bye.